Bob Holtzman. I, I oversee PR for Kerbal Space Program. Mm -hmm. uh, KSP, as we like to call it, is a multi-genre um, space agency uh, simulator. And uh, basically what you get to do is build rockets and build spacecrafts and see, see how they do and then learn orbital mechanics and, and just really have a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, Felipe is the lead developer and he, it was kind of his brainchild and he can tell you a little bit more about you know, the game and how it came to be. Yeah, And, uh, well, um, the idea for KSP has been with me for um, about 11 years now. It's, uh, it's definitely a pet project this time. It came along when I was uh, about, I think, 17 at the time, and uh, it was born out of this stupidly dangerous game with actual fireworks, where we would actually um, take them apart and dismantle them and like, strap fins and struts and kind of build spacecraft on them. And we'd make these little men out of tinfoil, um, which we strap to their duct tape cockpits and send them off to uh, the stars or a fiery death. Uh, usually the latter, and those guys are called Kerbals. And uh, back then, this is this wasn't an idea for a game. We realized that we were just war teenagers, but um, <laughs> with explosives. All the way through college and uh, starting to work, this idea stuck with me, and it kind of grew into something that could be a game. So uh, I started working at Squad, doing uh, what Squad originally does, which is a. Uh, interactive marketing and uh, installations like that, like projection mapping and uh, multi-touch stuff and uh, various things like that. And uh, some of those things were almost video games, but and they were really cool, but what I really wanted to do was make video games, so I walked up to them and I told them that's what I wanted to do, and they completely blew me away and they said, okay, go for it. Uh, if you bring a, a project and a valid like, business plan, we'll make it happen. When they said that, I immediately thought of KSP, so I wrote a quick design doc for the game, and it was really meant for much less ambitious game. Uh, it could have been done like a TV, just put a shit together, send it up and see how high you could go type of thing. And, uh, uh, and we really didn't know how far we could take the idea, so the game was done in multiple like, steps, and multiple updates. And because it was also new and because of the way it all got started, um, we didn't really know how far we could run with it, so we kind of expected the game to be like, terminated at any time. <laughs> So. so that's why we really call the game uh, available in early access. Mm -hmm. uh, I know some people talk about alpha and beta, but uh, because when Felipe started to develop the game, he didn't know how many updates we would actually have. He wanted to make sure that every time he finished an update and pushed it out to the public, it would be um, playable and, and be something that would be really fun for the people, even if it wasn't complete and even if it was still under development. So Felipe and Chad and the rest of the team always kind of go through an internal alpha and beta. We test it as rigorously as possible. And at that point, when we release it, uh, you know, it really, it really for these guys, it's like releasing, the, as you like to say, it's like one of 20, we're on the yeah. 20 second game. At this yeah, point. pretty much. It was like making 22 small games. <laughs> I think the, the core thing there is that each version stands on its own. So as we're waiting for the next update to finish development, you know, they have a game to play and they can keep working with it continuously. Even now that we're fairly certain that there will be an update after this one, it still will be update people are going to be playing for however long it takes to see the next one. So we always try to make sure it's as good as possible and it can hold its own as it's I've been kind of calling it an unwritten contract with the community that, like, we're going to give you something fun and playable. We know it's not done. But um, you know, you're still going to have fun with it, and uh, you know, then we'll get back to work on the next update. I mean, that's what these guys are doing. They've been working on update 0.22, uh, which you know has some pretty cool stuff. It's yeah. it's kind of the second in a series of updates that are going to be focused on the career mode, which has been a big vision for uh, Felipe and the team to you know just make sure that uh, you know while the game is really in a sandbox mode right now, it's going to be more than just a sandbox. Yeah, uh, career mode is pretty much the game uh, on top of the sandbox that you're building. So it, it adds all this, these elements of a tycoon-like game on top of uh, the existing game. So, well, the existing sandbox, because up until now there's been very little structure for it. So career mode is hopefully going to bring that 
And so um, there's going to be like a real interest to the game. So, you know, Chad, I mean, we'll probably talk a little bit about like the science uh, experiments. And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. One of the uh, one of the really cool things that we're doing is with the research and development, we're really getting into the idea of experimentation. So, you know, you could do that. Science is just like some guy, and you pay money in your budget, and like, poof, out comes science. But in this case, what we're doing is we're actually putting like experimental bays and parts on the ships. You launch them, and the really cool thing is the entire thing is completely contextual. So you're not going to get random results. It's all going to be based on what planet it's on, atmosphere, not orbit, you know, and. The really neat thing is, even if you didn't bring any science equipment with you, you can still tell the crew, you know, stick your head out the window basically, <laughs> tell me what you see. And even though everything's going to be very much in the Kerbal style, very lighthearted, very fun, and the experiments are going to be kind of whimsical, but it's really going to be following the kind of scientific method, be grounded in reality like the rest of the game is. Yeah, science, like, go out and run experiments, gather data, mm -hmm. and turn it in to crunch the numbers. Yeah. One of the really cool things is what we're doing with it, once you've gotten your data from your experimentation, you need to actually get it back to your scientists so they can turn it into, you know, advancement. So you can either land your craft on the planet and recover it, and that's kind of the best thing. Uh, or you can kind of just transmit through the comm systems and you'll get less than you would. Because it's kind of the difference of like, hey, I'm taking a picture of this rock on Mars, and hey, look, here's a piece of Mars. What can you do for me? Yeah. And, and it's really interesting because it's also adding purpose to a lot of the parts that we, we already had in the mm -hmm. game that didn't really have much purpose yet, like the antennas and communications yeah. equipment. We already had them, and they didn't really do anything. They would just animate the play, and it would be merely and now you can actually use them to beam data back into the curve and that will require power and be a whole new like, aspect of gameplay around it. So it's actually pretty exciting. It's going to be really cool to see what players do with it. And it's, it's part of a, a kind of a bigger complex, the research and development complex, which is going to actually be part of your space center, right? Yeah, there is a, apart from all this, there is a research and development facility at the Space Center, which is where you go mm -hmm. to see the technology tree, which is uh, kind of like the second half of the big feature, which is, um, um, because one of the big things we've noticed so far is that uh, right now in Sandbox, you know, uh, new players tend to get really overwhelmed by the amount of content. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, so I think we've been trying uh, our best to minimize that. And research and development comes in in a big way here because in, at the start of a career game, you're going to have just a very limited set of parts. As well. So you're going to be able to get a, a really nice idea of how everything fits together, why you have fuel tanks and engines and how you connect them and all that. And then as you progress, you start to gradually discover new parts. And hopefully that'll make the, the sheer cliff of learning in you know, civilization it's very linear but with us you know you can more so go into the kind of school of rocketry that you want so it's more player driven like you can advance down rocket science and bigger and better rockets or you can spend your time on space planes and the cool thing is is instead of overwhelming you with here's everything you can start to go into the things that you're interested in at your own pace when you're comfortable that it's all player driven and it's driven by um, trying as many different things as possible. Mm -hmm. So it's not that we require like some time mm -hmm. mechanic so you can <laughs> sit and pay for something and wait around until it's done. You, you really have to play the game to advance. So, uh, so it's all kind of a, uh, it's kind of like a feedback loop. So you play the game and you advance, <laughs> in terms of less, you advance technology. Yeah, it's, it's on the website, KerbalSpaceProgram.com. We also uh, have a great partner in Valve. We're on Steam as part of the Early Access Program Steam. Uh, you know, they've been great to us. And, uh, you know, so if you're a Steam player, please get there. If you just want to go to the website, it's there as well. And, you know, yeah, it's, uh, we're really excited about it. Absolutely. Thank you.